Hello 3D people, this is Subway from JoJoB Studios again. This time we're going to learn how to render this dressing bottle that we have modded earlier. Also I have received several questions about the process I usually follow to render in scenes. Uh, thank you guys uh, for sending me all those query and question. Keep sending me all of the query in the comment box or by email. Uh, this encourages us to produce more in-depth tutorial about CD or any subject you sent us. Now the process of rendering may vary based on the type of result you are expecting. Uh, but what I'm going to show you is basic structure of rendering engine. Now if any one of you guys want to skip the explanation part or the process part, you can find a link in the comment box to skip this part. This is the steps I usually follow when rendering any scene. We'll be start with a scene setup. What I mean by scene setup is collecting all the object in one scene that we need to render. Let's jump into 3D Max. Here I collected all the object that we're going to render. I also set up a camera to render the scene. Nothing special here, just three bottle and a camera and you can see there in the render it's quite a default render let's jump into photoshop again and see what is our next step in step 2 we are going to set up a studio lighting so this is what a studio lighting looks like in studio lighting object is illuminated by three or four light the light set up in a way so that it can illuminate the subject however desired also controlling the shading and shadow produced by the direct light. We will be using 3 light for our render. 3 point lighting is standard method used in visual media. Uh, if you want to learn more about it, just start Googling it. We will be start with Studio Ground. Let's jump into 3D Studio Max and start making the Studio Ground. Making the Studio Ground is very basic, so just uh, follow my lead. So our studio ground is ready, uh, let's create a material for this studio ground. Let's jump back to Photoshop again and see what's in our next step. Uh, so our studio ground is ready. Now we're going to create all these uh, light. Okay, let's uh, jump into 3D Studio Max again and start creating all those lights. Before creating all those light, I want to show you a technique. This is actually a very interesting feature of the, the active shade render. So let's check this out. Let's open up the render setup dialog box, choose active shade mode, select the output size to HDTV, uh, change it back to 700 so that it will render quickly, change the ray bundle size to 16, uh, change the press depth to 3. Now lock the render view so that whenever you change to any view, it will not uh, render that view. It will always render the camera view. 
everything is set up now from any view hit the render button now what this is actually this is actually render the whole scene instantly so that whenever we can make any change to our view it will render immediately Studio lightly setup is done. Now our next step is basic render setup. Let's go to the render setup. Choose the production render again. Now the render setup I'm going to show you is an optimized render setup. I experimented with uh, all of the setting and changed all of the values. Record the render time and found this is more effective for the first draft of your of any render. Now in any case, uh, if it doesn't work or it works great for you, uh, write me in the comment box. So let's start. From the frame buffer, enable built-in frame buffer. In global switch, uh, everything is fine. Uh, in image sampler, use uh, adaptive. And from the image filter, choose Mitchell Metro Valley. Uh, in the Arabic image sampler, uh, choose minimum subdivision 2 and maximum 2 7. Uh, in global DMC, choose the global subdivision multiplied to 1 and lock the noise pattern. In the color mappings, choose the inert and burn value to 0.843. In the GI tab, enable the GI, set the primary engine as agents map and secondary engine to light cache. Set the custom preset to custom and set up the uh, input in and set the minimum rate to minus 3 and maximum rate to minus 1. Choose the light cache to or the light cache subdivision to 1 for double 0 and the sample rate to 0 0.006. In the setting, 
uh, set the bucket width uh, to as minimum as you can. In my case, I am setting it to 20. The dynamic memory limit is depending on your system RAM. So change it according to your PCs or system RAM. Our end setup is done. Now I am going to show you another cool little tricks. Uh, all the setup that you have done in the time. Uh, it's very tedious or time consuming to set up all the same thing over and over again. But there is a cool feature in Vray. Uh, this is uh, this is the preset. So you can save all the setting in one selection set. So that uh, anytime you want to load the the setup that we have done a while ago, we can just select the select the custom preset and it will load the whole setting uh, that you have done in the, a while ago so select the preset in the right side you can find all the setting that you have done in the moment or the setting that you are required to render a scene just uh, in the left box just write a name and press the save button on the right bottom and it will save one for you from the next time you want to load your setting just click the preset setting preset button and load the your preset now render the image you might found this is uh, a bit unusual uh, because in active shape mode you saw there was no over brighten this but uh, in real uh, production render you see over washed or over lightened over brightened area yeah, this is because of the gi so we just need to change the intensity of our light so the intensity is low now and if you render it will render perfectly so our render setup is done Let's go back to next step and this is overhead material. Now keep remember that you can actually skip this part. Uh, but I like to render my every scene in a overhead material using overhead material so that I can have a clean render of my scene. This will also help you uh, when doing post-production. I'm going to use the video dark map to render the overhead material. Uh, you might don't know um, about the uh, dark material uh, this will give you a slightly dark area in uh, when two objects meet at one uh, so we can have some extra shadow where, where two object or two geometry meet at the se uh, at the same point keep following my lead and if you have any question about the dark map just let me know in the comment box uh, i will make a full tutorial about it see in the bottom of the bottle area where the our ground and the bottle bottom are met uh, we have darkest area also in the bottle neck or bottle cap this will help to enhance the image detail in the post production after the rendering is done uh, just save the image as png file or any file you like uh, we'll use that image in our final post-production uh, So jump into the Photoshop our, our material is done Now we're going for the next step and this is material setting 
means just untake the overhead material, you don't need it now. Set the production area to active shape mode to see the all changes in real time. Set render to active the active shape render then. Selecting a specific area to render because I don't need the rest of the image to render and wait for that. So the will be doing the cap material first
so now we are finished with the material now this is my favorite part optimizing and rendering uh, in this part what we will do actually change the light position to get the better image result uh, change some of the render setting to achieve more gorgeous looking image more look creative image also we'll take a look at our material and change some of the material and develop it uh, so that it comes out like uh, it was actually there or you can say it looks natural uh, optimizing is varied from scene to scene so there is no actually fixed way to show you or show everyone to how you can fix it or optimize it it depends on a lot of things uh, so if you face any problem with your scene just uh, write me in the comment box so that uh, I can give you a solution
we are done with the material setup and uh, render setup let's render the production image active the production rendering mode again and change the setting as you like to render the final image depending on your uh, requirement in my case i'm setting on my own uh, if you want you can follow my too That's the end of our tutorial. Be sure to subscribe our channel. If you want this project file, take a look at the video description. Uh, if you want us to make a tutorial, uh, just share it in the comment box. Thank you.